In this demo, we will show how to calibrate the Olympus MagnaMic 8600 using the half-inch or 12.7 millimeter diameter ADTD1 flat target disc. We will be using the 86PR-1 straight probe with the 86PR1-CWC chisel tip wear cap and the 86PRS1 probe stand. We will then use the disc target to measure the thickness of tear seams on an automotive airbag cover. The thickness of the tear seams range from approximately 0.020 inches or a half a millimeter to 0.60 inches or one and a half millimeters. We will be using the 86ACC-D-KIT, which includes the chisel wear cap, target discs, disc on fixtures, and reference standards designed to be used with the disc targets. We will be using the MagnaMic in an area free from interference from magnetic materials. The first step would be to connect the probe and probe cable to the instrument and then turn the instrument on. It is important to let the instrument warm up for at least five minutes before using it, so the probe can reach a steady state temperature condition. The MagnaMic 8600 can auto-detect the different size target balls, but it cannot auto-detect the disc or wire targets. Therefore, we will need to tell the instrument what target we are going to use. To do this, press the Setup key. Then, with measurement highlighted, press the right arrow so Target Select is highlighted, then press the Enter key. Press the right arrow so Point 5 Disc is selected. Since we are using the chisel wear cap, we also need to change the wear tip select. To do this, press the down arrow, then press the right arrow to change the wear tip select to chisel, then press the measure key. On the main measurement screen, the instrument will now display a white triangle to represent the chisel wear cap and it will show 0.5 disc for the target being used. Before beginning to calibrate, it is good practice to make sure the wear cap on the probe is screwed on securely and the instrument is in an environment with ambient temperature that is free of magnetic interference. The instrument should be in a location that it will be used in on a regular basis. We can now calibrate. To initiate the calibration process, press the Cal key. The first step of calibration is to perform a ball off. To do this, make sure the disc is removed from the probe tip, then press the Cal key. Once the instrument is done processing, the next step is to perform a ball on. To do this, take the 86 Cal TD alignment fixture out of the calibration kit. Next, insert the disc target into the slot on the alignment fixture. If needed, force the disc through the slot a few times to ensure that it will not get caught on the sides of the slot. Then, place the disc and fixture on the probe, making sure to align the disc perpendicular to the chisel tip edge. Then, gently pull down on the sides of the fixture to ensure the disc is in contact with the probe tip, then press the Cal key. After processing, the gauge will display a zero value. We can now remove the disc and fixture. The gauge will then ask for a thin shim and call out an approximate thickness. The thin shim called out for the disc target being used is 0.1600, or if you are using metric units, it would be 4.064. The English units of the approximate thickness being called out for the thin shim corresponds to a part number in the calibration kit. So the next step is to find the 86DCAL-160 reference standard. The reference standard includes a shim made of either brass or aluminum that is a particular thickness. The actual thickness of the shim is printed on the reference standard in English and metric units. It is very important to enter the actual thickness of the shim and not the approximate thickness that is being called out by the instrument. In this case, the thickness printed is actually the same as what is being called out by the gauge. But this will not always be the case. The next step would be to insert the disc into the slot on the top cap of the thickness reference standard and then place the fixture on the probe tip. Then gently pull down on the sides of the fixture to ensure the shim is in contact with the probe tip. The instrument will start displaying a thickness value. Once the reading is steady, press the Cal key. Then use the arrow keys to input the precise thickness of the shim which in this case is 0.160 inches or 4.064 millimeters. Then press the Cal key. 
we can then remove the disk target and calibration standard. The gauge will then ask for a thick shim and call out an approximate thickness value for the thick shim to use. The thick shim called out for the disk target being used is 0.3600, or if you are using metric units, it would be 9.144. The next step would be to insert the disk into the slot on the top cap of the thickness reference standard and then place the fixture on the probe tip. Then, gently pull down on the sides of the fixture to ensure the shim is in contact with the probe tip. The instrument will start displaying a thickness value. Once the reading is steady, press the Cal key. Then use the arrow keys to input the precise thickness of the shim, which in this case is 0.3600, or if you are using metric units it would be 9.144, then press the Cal key. After processing, the gauge will then ask if we want to add additional calibration points. If we choose No, the calibration process is over and we have completed a basic calibration. The recommendation is to always add additional calibration points since it improves measurement accuracy. Therefore, we will press the left arrow to highlight Yes and then press the Enter key. The gauge now shows the thin and thick calibration points we have already entered and it is asking for the next calibration point. At this point, we can add in the other reference standards from the calibration kit that we have not yet entered. We can remove the thick shim fixture. We can then take out the 86D Cal-010 reference standard. Then we will insert the disk into the slot on the top cap and place the fixture on the probe and pull down gently on the calibration fixture. The instrument will start displaying a measurement. Once the reading on screen is steady, we will press the Cal key. Once the instrument is finished processing, we will use the arrow keys to change the value to the exact thickness of the shim which in this case is 0.0100 inches or 0.254 millimeters. We will then press the Cal key, which will add this thickness to the list of calibration points. We can then repeat this process for the other calibration standards until they are all added to the list of calibration points. Once they have all been entered, we can press the Measure key. We have now completed a full multipoint calibration. It is good practice to check a few of the reference standards after the calibration has been completed to make sure they are measuring within specification. If they are not, you can try removing the target from the probe tip and then pressing the Q-Cal key. We will check the 20 thousandths of an inch shim to make sure it is measuring within specifications, which it is. Then we will check the 80 thousandths of an inch shim to make sure it is measuring within specifications, which it is. So once we have confirmed the reference standards are measuring within specifications, we are now ready to make measurements on the actual part. The true thickness will be when the target is directly over the center of the probe tip, which also corresponds to the minimum thickness measurement. The gauge will read a thicker measurement when the part is misaligned. For this reason, it is recommended to enable the minimum capture feature. To do this, we will press the Minimum, Maximum key and then enable Minimum to On by pressing the right arrow. We can then press the Measure key to return to the main measurement screen. It is important to note that based on the geometry of the chisel tip wear cap, it is possible to capture a false minimum if the part being measured is severely misaligned. Therefore, the user should take care not to severely misalign the part when making measurements. We can now insert the disc target into the inner seam of the airbag cover and hold the cover so that the chisel tip of the probe is in the outer seam of the cover. The gauge will start displaying a thickness reading and we can scan along the seam and the gauge will capture the minimum thickness of the seam. At any time, we can press the measure key to reset the captured readings. The minimum thickness will be updated as we scan. We can press the Enter key to freeze the measurements on screen if we need to transition to another seam or to another cover. Once we are ready to start taking measurements again, we can press the Enter key to unfreeze the measurements and the minimum thickness will be updated. These measurements can be saved to the internal data logger of the instrument or they can be sent directly to a spreadsheet. Now if another target is used, 
and the customer wants to recall the setup for the disk target we just used, they can press the File key and then keep pressing the down arrow until Cal Recall is highlighted. Then they can press Enter. Here we see a list of calibrated targets. The user can highlight the .5 disk target and then press Enter and then press Enter again on Recall. Whenever you recall a calibration file, it is always recommended to remove the target from the probe tip and perform a QCAL by pressing the QCAL key. It is also good practice to then check a few reference standards to make sure the instrument is reading within specification and a new full multipoint calibration is not needed. We will check the 20 thousandths of an inch shim to make sure it is measuring within specifications, which it is. Then we will check the 80 thousandths of an inch shim to make sure it is measuring within specifications, which it is.